I recently reorganized my kitchen pantry and I have a shelf devoted completely to spices. But the problem is that I can't ever find the spice that I'm looking for. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I created this three-tier spice rack in order to solve this problem I was having. I'm going to divide this video up into two big pieces. I'm going to start off with my design plans, and then I'll get into how I actually went about building this spice rack. If you'd like to skip over the design section and go straight into the building section, that starts up at about 6 minutes and 30 seconds into this video. So let's get started. First, I need some key measurements that I can use to help me design the spice rack. I started with measuring the shelf that the spice rack would occupy. Make sure that you get the length, width, and height of the shelf. You need all three dimensions. I also took the measurements length, width, and height of one of my spice jars. With these measurements, I can begin designing my spice rack. Here is the general design of my spice rack. Each color represents a different piece of wood that would be required to make this project. Now all I need is some measurements. Each of the three rows of the spice rack would hold 11 jars in it. And each of those jars we measured at a length of 2.5 inches. Now if we take 2.5 inches times 11, we get 27.5 inches, but I'm going to add an extra inch of space just so that they aren't crammed in there together. Now remember the length of the shelf was 31 inches so at 28 and a half inches I still have some room to spare. This spice rack has to hold three jars high. I measured the height of one spice jar at three and a quarter inches. If I multiply that by 3, I get 9 and 3 quarter inches of, of height. The maximum of the shelf space was 12 inches in height, so we should be okay to add in a little buffer of about a half an inch for each row. So I'm planning on making each row a height of 3 and 3 quarter inches, or 3.75 inches. And lastly, for the depth of the spice rack, the width of each spice jar was three and a quarter inches, just like the height of each spice jar. And so taking it times three, we get the same measurements. Now remember the maximum depth of the shelf was 11 inches, so we're still okay in this instance if we add a half an inch buffer in between each of the tiers. I'm switching to a side view of the spice rack and it's still color coded so that you can see the different boards that are going into making this spice rack. But in general, using the measurements that we just found by looking at the front view, each of the major sections are going to end up being three and three quarter inches. And I also want to give this spice rack some added support by placing a board at the back of the spice rack, which you can see in the purple board. It's really important to remember when you go shopping for boards that even though you're buying a one inch thick board, the thickness is really three quarter inches. So I used this thickness to help me determine the measurements of each of the boards that I need to use for this project. And here are those measurements. Each one is color coded to correspond with its placement in the spice rack. Each of the boards on the tiers are three and three quarter inches except for the very top board, the blue one. That one has a different width. It's three inches instead of three and three quarters. And regards to the board that sits in the back of the spice rack, the purple board, 
The height of that entire section needs to be seven and a half inches, but remember that the thickness of a one inch board is actually three quarter inches. So what we really need to make sure that we cut is six and three quarters as the width of that board. The next step is to determine what boards you need to purchase and go shopping. When shopping for a board, it's important to remember that even though a sticker might say one by four, that board does not actually measure one inch by four inches. A one by four would not be big enough for my purposes. And so I'm gonna need something a bit bigger, like a one by five or a one by six in order to get the three and three quarter inches that I want for this spice rack. I also picked up a one by 10, which I'm going to use for the back board of the spice rack, as well as the left and the right sides. This is represented by the purple board and the light blue boards. Now that the designing and the shopping are all taken care of, we're ready to move on to part two and start building this spice rack. And the first thing we're gonna do is start cutting the boards. I started cutting the one by six boards that are gonna form the tiers of this spice rack. The first thing I did was cut off a little piece at the edge just so that my board would have a, a smooth edge to start with. Now grab your measuring tape and mark your first cut. Now I made mine a little longer than it's supposed to be. The width of this board should measure 28 and a half inches, but I actually marked 30 inches. And it's because when I'm done cutting all of these boards, I'm going to stack them and then cut them again to size just to make sure that every single board is the same length as the other ones. I'm getting two 30 inch boards out of each one by six that I purchased. And then I grab the other board and repeat the process for a total of four 30 inch boards. Now I've reached the point where I'm gonna take all four of the boards and clamp them together just to make sure that all of the boards are the exact same length because they're gonna be squeezed together between the two end pieces. And in order for this to work right, they have to be the exact same size. I'm protecting the boards from the pressure of the clamp just so that I don't get any divots in the board. So I'm using two pieces of scrap board, one on the top and one on the bottom to protect it when I squeeze the clamp together on those boards. Now I'm gonna take my saw and skim one side of that stack of boards just to make sure that they are all even. And I'm gonna repeat this process for the other side of the boards. I'm gonna clamp the boards together using two scrap pieces of wood and then release the clamp on the other side so it's easier to cut. I'm using my tape measure again to mark off 28 and a half inches and then using my saw to cut those boards to size. All right, now I'm gonna start working on the one by 10 board that's going to be used for the back of the spice rack and also for the left and right side pieces of the spice rack. And once again, before I measure anything, I'm just gonna take off a piece right at the edge of the board just so that I have a smooth cut to work from. I grabbed one of the tear pieces that I just cut. I'm lining up the edges and then using a pencil to mark out the 28 and a half inch distance. It's really important that these boards are all the same length. For the side pieces, the tiers of the spice rack are going to be seven and a half inches tall. 
but I want the sides of the spice rack to be a little taller than that so that there's a bit of a lip just to add a little decorative flair to this spice rack. So I'm cutting the boards to 10 inches tall right now and then I'll cut them down to the size that I need uh, once I get a little further along in this project. Now all of these boards so far are just a little too wide for my project. So I called up a friend of mine and asked if I could borrow his table saw. For the tier pieces, I had specific measurements that three of the four pieces needed to be three and three quarter inches or 3.75 inches wide. The very top piece of the tiers needed to be three inches wide. And then the back piece of the spice rack needed to be exactly six and three quarter inches wide. Here's a quick little reminder of those measurements. In order to fasten all of the tiers together, I decided to use my Craig jig system. Before I did any drilling, I mapped out where I need those pocket holes to go. The pocket holes indicated in the black color are going to be used to fasten the tiers together. Now notice that the first board, the red board, does not actually utilize any of these pocket holes. The pocket holes indicated in white are going to be used to fasten each board to the left and right side pieces. Notice that they are slightly off center and this is going to give you a little bit easier access when we fasten the tiers to the side pieces. Now just inspect each board for the best side. Whichever one looks the best to you should be facing the front. Whichever one doesn't look that great or has some imperfections, that's the side that you want to drill your pocket holes into. Also, you need to set up your Craig jig. Now remember that these boards have three quarter inch thickness and so I'm following my user manual to set up the Craig jig for three quarter inch boards. It's always a good idea to start with a scrap piece of board and just make sure that everything's working correctly before you drill holes into your project pieces. Consider labeling each board by marking it with a pencil just to help you keep track of how those boards are gonna fit together. As you work, be sure to refer back to the map of the location of each of those pocket holes. Next up, I'm going to sand all of the boards. I'll start with a rough grit sandpaper and go over the boards and, and all of their edges. And then I'll switch out the sandpaper to an extra fine sandpaper, which will make the boards really smooth and I'll repeat the process going over all of the surfaces and the edges of each of the boards. For this next step, I'm going to assemble the tiers of the spice rack by using one and a quarter inch Craig jig screws. I'm first joining together the bottom tier, which is comprised of the red and orange color coated boards. Next, I'm screwing together the blue and green color coated boards. These together make up the second tier of the spice rack. And then I'm going to undo what I just did and I'm going to unscrew that second tier. You'll see why in just a minute. Next I'm going to take the green color coated board and screw it into the first tier. This is a little difficult to do with just one person. And so if you don't have uh, an extra set of hands to hold the boards together for you, um, an idea might be to use clamps to hold the board in place while you screw it in.
Now for the top piece, the blue color coated piece. The angle on these boards is not going to be very friendly in order to screw these together, but since you have guide holes already, you can line up the screws with where they're supposed to go, and that'll help you kind of screw this in a little bit easier, again, if you only have one set of hands. And now I'm going to screw in the back piece and attach it to the tiers. The last thing I like to do for this step is to just take my sander and go over the edges again just in case they're not perfectly even. You can sand them down until they're smooth. For this step I'm going to focus on the decorative pieces on the left and right side of the spice rack. Grab one of the 10 by 10 inch pieces Line it up with one of the sides of your spice rack. Then grab a pencil and trace the outline of your spice rack onto that side piece. And repeat this process for the other side. I've decided that I want a one inch lip all the way around the side piece of the spice rack. So I'm grabbing a square and then measuring one inch away from my traced lines in all directions. Now I'm going to take my square and line it up with each of those markings and draw a straight line so that I'll know where to cut these pieces. Here is a close-up of what my markings look like. I've also indicated what part of the board is getting cut away. Now I'm using my saw to cut along those markings. This middle portion is a little trickier. You want to be careful that you don't go too far, but the saw can give you an initial cut, which you can clean up by using a hacksaw. My hacksaw left a jagged edge, which I'll clean up by using some sanding equipment. I tried a couple different tools to sand out that jagged piece. I started with a sanding bit on my Dremel tool. Then I switched to a grinder for a little while to get into that corner. But I've got to say that the tool that ended up working out the best was just a piece of wood used as a sanding block and a piece of sandpaper. Now that that's done, here's what we have so far. I decided that those side pieces would look a little nicer with a rounded edge, so I grabbed my router and a rounding bit and started to round out those edges. I didn't want to round the edge on the surfaces that would touch the shelf or the wall in the pantry, and so I used a scrap piece of board to help me make sure that those edges stayed straight. And then just flip this board over and repeat this process for the other side, and then grab your second board and do it all over again. And now I'm going to attach the left and right pieces to the spice rack using one and a quarter inch screws. For any screws in hard to reach places, I got out my socket wrench and it took a while, but eventually I got them all in there. When you're done with one of the sides, flip that spice rack over and start working on the other side. Before moving on to the next step, I like to check the seams where the boards join together and sand any spots that aren't quite even. And here's what we have so far. For the last step, all you need to do is pick a stain and then seal your spice rack. Here is my spice rack with stain applied. I also decided to add some felt pads to the bottom of the spice rack just so that it wouldn't scratch my shelf. 
And now for the final reveal. I went from my spice shelf looking like this to this. I'm pretty excited with how it turned out. I hope this video provided you with some useful tips and tricks to help you with your own project. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you! Thank you.